time for the way it is 7 12 a.m on this monday the 6th of october and joining me in studio this morning is ambrose Ward, uh, Weda, lawyer kamoda waiganjo who's commissioner of the cic agostino neto and the member of parliament good morning and thank you all for joining us this morning i'll start with you neto uh there's a session today uh president set to address both houses of parliament will you attend uh, no why not i mean the party leadership and the court have agreed that uh, the session was uh, not procedurally called and i really think uh, therefore we we're not able to to get to it i mean i know there are several um, indications or as to reasons whether the court shall attend or not but you know parliament and the sittings of parliament are guarded by the st parliament standing standing orders and um, there are specific ways in which you can call for a session of parliament when especially when parliament is in recess you see the pal the president is an obligation to address the state when, i mean parliament whenever he wants to but when parliament is on recess there's how you can get members of parliament back to parliament and i think that was not so how are you called and what's the procedure good uh standing order number 22 says that um, uh, their president is entitled to address the special settings of parliament and he can address that parliament at any other time. That is the same as, uh, provision as under the constitution at score 132. But when parliament is under recess, article, uh, standing order number 29 says uh, the majority leader and the minority leader and the speaker ought to consult and the agenda of that particular session ought to be very specific. And the specific, there's a specific agenda in terms of um, standing order 61, what really makes parliament to be called during recess and how that should be done. And I think that was not done. That is why court is saying they are, they are not setting in. Wada? Um, I, I find it very strange. I hope my member of parliament, Honorable Dr. James Wamburani Kal, will be more reasonable than the whole pack. This um, visit or, 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 or travel to Netherlands. It's a serious national issue because it involves the head of state <coughs> and it involves uh, issues of this country including security. The people who are representing us who should hear what the president has asked to say, what the president plans to do, what he has left in place in case something goes wrong are our M MPs. Are our parliamentarians. Now, if some of them are running away because they, just, they want to go and uh, play, I don't know, football or whatever, that is very sad. They should, and I urge Agostino Neto, the Constitution is clear, the Constitution envisaged that such issues may arise, and therefore parliamentarians must be there, not only listen to the president, but air certain specific views that are in the interest of the country. Boycotting so that you go around and dance in public places is not a fair way of running a beautiful country like Kenya. Well, Gancho, what do you make of it? One, I think uh, the reality is that court, like all parliamentary parties, is entitled to express displeasure in whichever way they desire. I think mm -hmm. in all democracies, you know, parties express displeasure, di express dis displeasure in different ways. I, I would have hoped, however, that if we're talking about procedural issues, that those procedural issues would be raised in the House. I, I, think, I think that would be the more appropriate thing to do for a responsible political party but it's their right and, and i think they don't, actually don't even need to explain they can just decide they don't like this sitting they will not attend i mean that's that's a right democratic yeah yeah so I, I really think that let's let's be fair i mean uh, i was hoping in fact i i, I kept some of what i was going to see uh, so that I listen to that gentleman. Um, if I told you a country that believes in the rule of law, and you know why Ganjo here sits at the CIC, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be about constitutional implementation issues, uh, I think Parliament is not just one of those houses, and I'm happy where the things that will not go because they're going to be dancing in the streets. Uh, Parliament has a way of doing its own things. That is the reason why we rise, stand the speaker, there's order, there's precedence. And the standing order is what makes us slightly different in terms of an ordinary setting of house. So that if at all, for example, nothing stops the president from addressing the nation on the issue of whatever he wants to address us on but we ought to follow the procedure and that is actually that is a, that is where the problem begins so that if at all you're going to be letting the president wake up someone as, as to whatever he wants i really think that is so wrong. why were those issues not raised in parliament in the house uh, how, how do you how do you raise them in an illegal Your forum i mean the forum as it's going to be considered this afternoon is illegal i mean you do not proceed that way that is what the law anticipates so, so why, 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 would you, why would you be part of an illegal process, an illegality from the word go? So you're participating in an illegality to raise an illegality. I really think that is unfair to us. So none of the court members will be in parliament today? Uh, it's their choice to attend or not to attend, but I think the leadership and the party has taken a position that we think this is an illegality and we should not be part of it. 
You talk about the illegality, but other members have come out to say it simply because they feel what the president will be talking about today is a personal matter and they should not be summoned on the same. Do you also agree on that? But I really think it's not a personal matter that the president... You see, the president can even summon... I mean, if parliament could be summoned so that the president speak to us on personal matters. In fact, not, the president can tell the country anything he wants on the floors of parliament. But those sittings ought to happen... When it comes to Parliament, this should be an, uh, an ordinary sitting. But this special sitting, there's a procedure of calling it, and I really think the special sitting was not properly done, and, and that's why I really think that uh, let's not raise issues. It is not because the President is addressing us on a personal matter. No, it's because the procedure was not followed, and the agenda ought to be, 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 be made um, straight up front. The agenda, we do not know what we're going to talk about. We can be discussing coffee, we can be discussing any other thing, but that agenda should be told. Okay. What a mm -hmm. final comment on that I think they know because... that the president has said and it is known that he wants to address specifically on the question of ICC and this going out of the country to, uh, to attend that court. They know it, but you know... Uh, you see, when they're not all of us uh, are, are in TN. Now, get so, it. It's I, I, not I TN. Not know. Yeah. It, it is not TN. And, and, and there would be nothing easier than uh, calling the speaker and saying, Mr. Mr. Speaker, on Justin mm -hmm. Muturi, what exactly is this? But boycotting boycott running away from your house because the parliament belongs to the parliamentarians actually. so they are running away court side <laughs> is running away they are deserting the house that is not that's not a way to lead a nation uh, whether one day of, of when you this caliber one that's day, a way to lead some whether one day when you get to parliament public. one day when you get to parliament you'll understand that parliament is a house of order and procedure that we can do anything else we want to do in parliament. Boycott is not part of the, <laughs> the, the boycott, standing orders. Boycott is not part of the standing orders, <laughs> yes. but there's a way in which you can do things. You can call us any time. That is the reason we don't all speak at the same time. That is why one person stands, the other mm -hmm. one sits. There's order. It's, it's an august house. It's a house of order and prestige. So yes. order. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, you want to talk to us, and you, are, you expect parliament to be present. I think it's, it's, well, it's, it's you, you know, Sophia, one of the things that our constitution does, and it emphasizes it in quite a number of places, is the need to always subvert, uh, you know, procedural issues and deal with substantive issues. The, the, the right of the president to call the house is a constitutional right. right. The right of the president to, to address that house is a, at any time is a constitutional right. And that's why I say that if the reason why any party would oppose it, and by the way, it doesn't have to be procedural. They could actually even base it on the issue of their agenda. But if the issue is procedural, I think the more appropriate thing would be attend the session and raise the issue procedurally. And if the procedural issues are substantive, nothing stops members of that party from even walking out if they desire to. But I think what I'm saying is, let, let us, these are, these are substantive national constitutional issues. Let us not subvert them on the basis of procedural question. Having said that, I will insist any party, TNA, whoever, is entitled to express displeasure. Yeah. Yeah. At any time, in any manner that they feel advances political. That, that is how democracies operate everywhere. So technicality yeah. versus substance, why uh, would courts uh, choose I, I, I to ride on very strange that Waiganja should be saying it's a constitutional right of the president to uh, address parliament as and wherever he, he, he chooses to. You see, he cannot summon parliament. The only time the president is envisaged to, to, to speak to parliament as a matter of right is when we're convening a new set of parliament, session of parliament. That, then he has a matter of right. But you see, even if parliament were in session, if I told you we are sitting every day, a normal sitting, then the president can actually come to parliament. But the thing is, right now, people are on recess. There's a way of doing it. So, and if, so, so if I told, for example, Kwe Ganjo should have been advising the speaker, gentlemen, yes, you, the president needs to speak to the nation, but just do the right thing to do. And I, I'm really shocked at what I'm hearing. And, and, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know the reality is, the problem with this country is that on most issues, generally on most issues, we see them through political eyes, you know what I mean? And sometimes, even what hap sounds reasonable, rational, the reality is that we wear certain classes. The, the right netto of the president to address the, the accession of parliament at any time is a constitutional right. It is not the president who has summoned parliament. It is not. It is the House leadership that has summoned parliament. Are there procedural issues that have arisen in that summons? Yes. Like you say, there may not, be, have, not have been consultations. We don't know. 
Those are issues that you converse in the house. I don't think that those are issues one converses outside of the house. Because the reality, these are parliamentary. This is an august house. This is a critical institution of this country. The presidency is a critical institution of this country. We want to see conversations. If there's a problem with procedure, I don't think it should be resolved outside of the house. Th that's all I'm saying. I think it's important that if there are substantive issues, if there's something that has gone wrong, let us resolve it where even Kenyans can, can see a rational conversation. And I think that is important, not just for parliament, but for all other institutions. I think this thing where people talk at each other is not helpful for creating a nation of discourse, a nation of rational discourse. I think that is what is important. And I don't think Kenyans get very excited when we are just shouting out at each other, even though we have forums in which we can resolve those issues. And if they're not resolvable, let us deal with them as as the studying orders allow issues like of, of a procedural nature, nature to be dealt with. So, so what I'm saying is let us choose the forums in which we negotiate and, and discuss national concerns. Okay. Let's talk mm -hmm. about what some have said and the debate rages on, on whether the president should attend and not. I know you both said he should attend, but there are those of the school of thought that with the AU resolution, which Kenya spearheaded, rallied African countries to come together to say at the end of the day that no sitting head of state should be tried at the international National Criminal Court, of course, while still in office. So there's one side, if he goes, then he's a sellout to the AU um, countries because then he's gone against what he was pushing for from the very beginning. And then again, there's all these consequences from uh, restaurant if he doesn't go and all this. Where do you still hold your position that he should attend? I have held that position and I continue holding it and I see no reason. Even if he turns out to be a sellout to the AU? Um... I, I don't think it will turn out to be a sellout. <coughs> you know, AU is uh, neither here nor there when truth is told. When real issues come on the table, really, they, they, there's no AU. They, there's nothing much. They do when people kill each other in Darfur, Rwanda, wherever. Here, our president went to the ballot with the ICC case in front of him. Mm. We asked him, Your Excellency, if you were elected, what would happen? You see. It's a personal issue. I will honor my obligations. We said, fine, we understand what a court is. Proceed. And we gave him overwhelming votes in round one. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, mm -hmm. our brothers and uh, cousins all over the continent, they come and tell you, sitting president, sitting. They make you feel like a god. You are a small god. They forget that the deputy, the number two, already goes to that court and comes back. Now they're telling me, as a sitting president, the first president, you cannot go there. They don't want to tell us these are the consequences if it doesn't go. More so, when the case itself looks so weak, that the best way is to go there and say, please put your witnesses if it's necessary, so that we come up with it. So I still share the view, as I shared, that the president should go there, we should all join in prayers, and I call upon the court wing of the country. <laughs> when your brother is going to a dangerous place like a court, you don't stand outside throwing stones and boycotting and saying, ah, you, you join and say, we pray for you, we pray for your success, please come back. When you are back, we'll battle internal, but this is now internal and external. So I maintain the president should go, and he's going, and I said he will go. What if he doesn't? Today we might hear something different. No, he will go. <laughs> this, this, this is not, a, this is not a, a banana president. This is a real president that when things come to when real decisions come and requires real men or real women to make, yeah. he will not listen to the more comments or to the rest. He says, now, this is the real... You understand, the other people are shouting, don't go. But when the decision moment comes, there's always reason to the occasion. He will go and he will be back. Why Ganja? Uh, well, Sophia, two things. One is that uh, I'm one of those people who believe that we made a mistake right from the beginning when we refused to deal with these issues internally. Yeah. Because the reality is that when the Deputy President of, a, of the Republic of Kenya uh, is in The Hague every, sitting in the International Criminal Court, when the President of the Republic of Kenya is sitting in the criminal, is International Criminal Court, it actually is an indictment of the nation. Mm. You know, we're a country of the rule of law. We're a country with established institutions. We're not a banana republic. And, and for, our, for our leadership to be in The Hague is unfortunate. However, now that we chose that route, we actually are bound both as a matter of the, our own constitution. By the way, our own constitution even removes, refuses, uh, removes the issue of immunity 
uh, for even sitting uh, uh, leaders mm. on, on, on issues of international crimes. So in a sense, that is not an issue that we can be protected by our constitution all through the Rome Treaty, which we signed. Right. You know, so, so in a sense, I don't even think it's a matter for discussion. Now, the president can choose at any time that he will not go. But as a matter of law, as a matter of responsibility, both international law and local law, he's actually obliged. And he himself has made commitments to the same court that when called upon by the court, he will appear. And he made that when he was president. So in a sense, I'm not even sure that it's a matter of should he, should he not go. We are a country of the rule of law. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some court members have been very excited in the event he does not attend. Impeachment. Enter impeachment. Uh, I mean, I, I said earlier on uh, when I appeared here yeah, sometime last week that one, I would really re expect the president to appear at the Hague because if he, he's done well in terms of uh, agreeing to oblige by, by obligations of the court. And I think also as a person who believes in the rule of law, he should and actually ought to go to the Hague. And um, also, I'm happy that he's uh, dissociating himself with the pack of African leaders. Because then at least it, it still reassures us that Kenya uh, believes in the um, rule of law and Kenya is on its own, its own play field. And, and th that, that's a good thing for, for the continent. That at least, yes, uh, we might have made joined some joint decisions as heads of states. But on this one, I really think Kenya needs to lead. Um, I said as a member of COD that if it only didn't go, it was, it was good for us. But I really did not expect him to go that way. Because if he didn't go, of course, we'll, we'll be up with an impeachment agenda. Yeah. But that is not how you want to go. You want to, you want to compete fairly. You want to win fairly in the next election where no one raises any issues. So, so really, really, the president should uh, be at the status conference. At the what about the flurry of activity we saw from Friday, I think Thursday as well, members of parliament, senators, governors, CSs, all just trying to get their documentation together to uh, travel with the president. I think that's the most unfortunate of all things that's going to happen. I mean, How it's so? very unfortunate. Uh, one, that you're going to have 130 members of parliament singing and dancing and kneeling at the Hague. I really think that's, <laughs> that, that uh, it's totally uncalled for. It, it's a waste of public resources or it's a, it's a waste of pu private resources. But they resources. have said they're using their own money. Uh, they cannot afford. I said this yesterday they somewhere. Uh, half the colleagues are going to the Hague. I mean, half, you know, um, not everyone else can afford to fly. It's about 300,000 shillings uh, and you cannot <coughs> expect many of them to just expect to fly up and about. I really think it's unfair to just to put public resources in that kind of use. Where the, are you first I, traveling? Let's no, 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 no. I, I think uh, that court is very small, smaller than this studio, and they don't allow uh, blazing around. So those people will be walking around the streets doing window shopping. They are the same people are telling the president not to go. When the president says no, I say, Commander in Chief, I will go. Then they are we are escorting, hoping they'll get a little time near the president to, 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 to cry louder than the bereaved. That thing they are doing, they should not have done it. Really? But the worst part of it, mm -hmm. it is dangerous. This is a critical moment when our president is going to a court. He's not going on just an ordinary state of We need most, if not all, our MPs here. A time may come when we have to take a quick decision as a country. It is taken through Parliament. Now, when they are all loitering around in the Netherlands, <laughs> surely, surely, we must think rationally as a country. That I don't support. A few, they should have allowed a few. They should have sat down and said, okay, we are handed Form a over. committee of yes, solidarity. Yes, say, so, so and so you represent this region, so and so you represent this region, so and so you represent this region. So the 20 of you keep the president company. When he comes out of the court, you smile at him, you do this. But some who have never even greeted the president. The president doesn't even know their faces. <laughs> now they are going to loiter all over. No, I don't think we are acting rationally. There, I don't support. <laughs> what do you think about it? I don't know. I, I, I think... Um, the problem with this country sometimes is that even on very serious issues, you know, we, we enjoy the drama. Um, <laughs> the reality is that the reason why the, the, the president is before that court, mm -hmm. a lot of it is the failure of parliament to pass legislation that would have avoided this process. I, I am not sure that the way you, you determine whether you support the president is going to the Hague. I mean, there are other ways in which you can show the president support. I mean, there are projects, there are issues that the president has an interest in which parliamentarians have not been pursuing. I mean, if you really want to show your support for the president, that is where you, you, you assist. That is because that is your role as a legislator. Mm. Th they should be on the forefront on, on ensuring they're pushing the president's agenda with the same enthusiasm that they are not going to the Hague. And the problem with it is that 
as much as it is, of course, their private right, and I, I, I mean, I obviously hope that they are using uh, uh, private money. money, except that they are also on salary by the Republic of Kenya. I doubt that they will be on leave, and so there are also issues there. But, but the reality is that we can also turn this into a circus, you know, in the Hague. And I'm not sure that it's good uh, for the credibility and for the image of the Republic of Kenya, for some of the things that we do. They're not good. It's bad enough that our president is in the court. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we need to push that agenda yeah. and make the country look ridiculous. So, so I think it's something that requires a little more thinking. But like most things, Kenyan, we, we prefer the drama. It's more interesting. Yeah. But I don't think that it helps the country. They will not yeah. even be allowed in the compound of the court. The compound alone. They'll, 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 they'll don don those caps, you know, the Kenyan ones. Where? I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I really think on this, and I'm agree, in agreement with the two gentlemen. Yes. It's Which is a good thing to it's agree sometimes. <laughs> I, I mean, it's the most ridiculous of all things to yeah. have 130 members of parliament idling and singing, really. Uh, that should be done by other people. There well. initially were reports that some heads of state might go, that uh, there's not been much... Uh, to that of late. But what do you think if some heads of state were to accompany him? I mean, a head of state appearing in the Hague for me would not be much of a problem. One or two heads of states, I mean, you, you understand you can be in those circumstances. But for Kenyan members of parliament, and like Waiganjo says very well, the things that we ought to have done as parliament in terms of one, uh, moving legislation to establish a local tribunal, you know, we've mm -hmm. not done that. There, there are things we should have been doing in terms of strengthening the international criminal um, uh, division of the DPP's office, we've not done that. So just to go and sing and uh, make the president happy, I really think it's unfair. Let me, just, let me just add on one thing, yes. just Kidogo. You know, those judges are human beings, like any other. You win in court through persuasion. You persuade by looking humble, by speaking the right words, by behaving in the right way. That is what we expect. But the mere fact that the president will be in that court will be very humbling, even to the court. So that when he says, I am here, ladies and gentlemen, let's know what we have on the agenda. But now outside, there will be people sending contrary signals, rioting and shouting outside, but like putting pressure no, on the no, court. No, they should not no, do that. Not be <laughs> They'll be picketing. I mean, uh, <laughs> <Picket don't... laughs> it. Well, we'll wait to see. But an important um, stakeholder in all this is the victims. And they rarely get a lot of um, you know, airtime in terms of conversations around ICC. We've seen the report by John Allen. Um, seven years on, there are still Kenyans after the post-election balance who are in Uganda. Um, what with this case is seemingly crumbling, that of the DP and co-accused and this one of uh, the president, the prosecutor coming out to say they have no evidence, they need to rebuild it all over again. What then becomes the hope for the victims? I'll begin with you, um, Neto, because last parliament failed on the local tribunal. I really think that uh, that is where this uh, last parliament failed and this <coughs> parliament is failing. Uh, you know how Kenya ended up in the ICC or how a state ends up in the ICC is one if it's unwilling or unable to, to uh, per persecute uh, uh, perpetrators. And you know Kenya was unwilling and is unable, that's, that's unfortunate. That, uh, and uh, you know the story now has turned all over to be focused on Uhuru Kenyatta and, and DP William okay. Ruto at the expense of the, of the victims. I really think it's an indictment on, 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 the, on the Kenyan people that, you know, we've been experiencing violence since 97, 2002, 20, 2007. And if at all we do not punish uh, the perpetrators of, of, of 2007, uh, 2017 is going to be all the same again. Because um, people will be seeing, that's what impunity is about, that you know you can kill, you know you can maim and, and, and go away scot-free, even at the, the highest court in, in, in the world, International Criminal Court, you can still then walk away scot-free. So, so then what is there? The the reason Kenyans didn't fight 2013, in my opinion, was because the Hague was still hanging over our heads. But should the president and the, the DP walk scot-free and Sang walk scot-free, then I really think that 2017 is something that we must really, really be scared about. And I think that's not pretty for Kenya. Really? You agree with that? I think um, we... Ocampo got it wrong from the outset. Yeah, because you're suggesting that they're guilty. If they walk scot-free, then it's an issue. No. What, what I'm saying is that there ought to have been a mechanism in terms of which the perpetrators... Because people died. People were displaced. So who did that? If at all people are going to die, people are going to be displaced, no one is charged, we don't see any convictions, then who did it? I mean, it was not just like we woke up and killed... But whose fault is it that no movement is on, especially at home? Uh, I mean, the leadership, one, the deputy, uh, the deputy president, the president himself, because right now, you see what we should have been saying. Uh, I saw the Attorney General move several times to the Hague, one, to ask for a deferral, two, for, for a deferral of the case, uh, claiming that we had a robust judiciary, one that was, was up new, the new Chief Justice. But look, uh, Kenya's, Kenya 
Kenya has made an attempt to strengthen the International Crimes Division of, of the ODPP's office. That has come a cropper. Kenya said we were going to have a local mechanism to deal with the post-election violence in 2007, 2008. Nothing has happened. So really, this leadership should be showing us that yes, part of the reasons we're showing, we're showing Kenyans that we are sorry about what happened in 2007, 2008 is because we've created local mechanisms to deal with post-election violence. That has not happened. I think I find it very strange because uh, one thing you should remember is that for five years it was uh, Honorable Raila Odinga and, President, and uh, former President Moe Kibak who were in charge. Yes. President Uru has been in charge for a year and so you cannot blame him on this. But the problem started with Okambo. He not only failed to identify who are the actual victims. Are they people like those ones posturing between Kenya and Uganda claiming they are whatever, they, they can't go back and you ask them where, have they tried to go back and they have been stopped? Or who were the, vi the victims? It, they should have been identified. There should have been record. That is one. Secondly, Ocampo appears to have gone for the wrong people. And therefore, is either we get hold of these wrong people, President Uru and, um, and uh, his deputy, or, or the victims will, will be affected. I think that mistake having been done, the loss should fall where it is due. The office of the prosecutor should take full responsibility in this one and say, we messed it up, and therefore, we messed you up. But also the so, leadership in Kenya. Which, which one? The, 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 the Raila Kibaki one or the... The Pradeduru last one? parliament. Yeah, well, the well, last well. parliament now, we call, call, call them. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, blaming it on President Uru, surely. That's being unfair. No, uh, well, Ganjo, is there any recourse I, for I think, I think the reality is, uh, and Neto, I think there's also been a failure of, of the House, both this House, both the previous parliament and this one. How has this mm. one failed? To, to utilize the mechanisms that parliament has at two levels, actually at three levels. One is on the matter of legislation. I think our legislative framework for dealing with these issues internally yes. is still not as strong as it could have been. And, and that is where Parliament, that is actually what I was saying, mm -hmm. that instead of people going to The Hague to, to empathize with the president, mm -hmm. there are issues that they can do here. But we have legislation. Number two, but we have budgetary allocation. Some of these issues that, um, that arose for many of the victims were financial losses. There is a mechanism through which there would be sufficient budgetary allocation to resolve those issues and to create a mechanism through which that is a fair and, and, and reasonable process. Number three, this uh, parliament is the one that holds state officers to account. Whether we are talking about the office of the DPP, whether we are talking about even the, the Judicial Service Commission, whether we are talking about all the institutions, including the, the executive, the institutions that are responsible for resolving these things are accountable to parliament. What you see parliament with a lot of enthusiasm is on issues of governors, and these are the issues which again are more about drama. But on the critical issues which affect the, the citizen, you don't see the same enthusiasm in holding public officers accountable. Why is it that so many years after, Parliament continues to fund the prosecutorial arm of government, and yet they continue saying the prosecution has not, these people have not prosecuted uh, the, the, the people who carried out. Because at, ultimately, by the way, and here I'll disagree slightly with Wendell, the responsibility of ensuring that Kenyan victims and the question of who was responsible is primarily the Kenyan government. It is not the ICC. Mm. It, it is, it, you know, <coughs> because the, rea the responsibility of the ICC is generally to, to deal with the highest perpetrators of the crimes. The other middle level and low level um, uh, actors, our own system should have dealt with them. The fact that they have managed to get away scot-free is actually the failure also of parliament, which holds all state organs, all state officers responsible. So in a sense, all parliamentarians should own the problem and say we have failed also in, in well, protecting Kenya. You own it? He says a couple of good things there. Uh, one, um, and I'm happy that uh, half the majority were taking the president, uh, members of his party. Uh, who should not have been dancing there but instead get, engaging in sufficient legislative issues. Yes, I agree that Parliament has failed. One, uh, one of the things that they did is to bring a resolution to withdraw Kenya from ICC. That again was, was madness at the highest level possible. Because then, uh, one, it even just does not mess up uh, the Uhuru's case and the DPP's case, but also just shows that we are not interested in, in, in issues of post-election violence. But the second thing is that is a policy issue, and that is why I blame uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and, and the DPP. Uh, that one, they should have insisted that the, you know, Parliament allocates budgets as to functions that someone requests for. And I talk with a bit of authority because I sit in the Committee of Justice, which gives the DPP money. 
the DPP ought to show us that one, I want to strengthen the international criminal uh, criminal code. I mean, criminal uh, jurisdiction. He did not request for that kind of money. So how, how do you give someone money and his policy does not does not reflect that he wants to do it? So one, as a matter Neto, of Neto. Yes. right there. The responsibility of parliament is not for us as state officers to come and tell you what we need. And you have no view. There is a responsibility of your committee to be able to say one of the issues in which the DPP's office are not dealt with this issue is the, 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 the prosecutions around the PEV. I think even before you move further to the next budget item, it is the responsibility. That is why parliament is now a budget-making institution. It's no longer just a budget-approving uh, uh, institution. So in a sense, you are now part of the, of the, of the institutions that actually make budgets. Good. Now, uh, that budget-making process ought to be initiated as a policy level by someone else. So a DPP, I mean, I cannot wake up in the morning and tell the DPP how to do his work. My oversight role is not to give directions. My oversight role is to ask, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this particular function? So that, for example, if the DPP came and said, we want... So you're saying your role is to sit back and wait. Isn't he asking that? Are you not no, no, more no. involved now? You know, Parliament is more involved right now in terms of the budget-making process. But you do that only on the initiative. Of, of the person in charge of the office. So one, once we've given you the money, once you've given, I mean, CIC, for example, tell us they want to do civic education, I want to enact this sort of legislation. That is the initiative. But if the DPP, for example, has not created initiative to show us that he wants to strengthen the International Criminal Rights Division, then I really think it's not, it's, not the, it's not the business of Parliament to tell him how to do his job. But Parliament ought to oversight in terms of what he does. You say Parliament is helpless? I mean, I find this amazing. Even when we appear before your committee, there are issues you ask as you say, how come? Have you considered this? How come you have not put in money for this? How come this is lacking? Mm. That, in my mind, there is, is surely it cannot be. The members of parliament are helpless. Whatever state officers bring is what they say, well, that's what we can do, even though we think you have other priorities that are within your mandate. That, that I, 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 I think you need to understand what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. The one, uh, you see, as a matter of policy, uh, the state department that does create its policy in terms of how it wants to roll it, or its functions. As parliament, you can tell them, yes, we are going to give you money for this particular function. But the DPP's office ought to show that, for example, is interested in prosecuting international criminal. Which is where he's coming from with the point that are you, can you not also bring it up? Do you always have to sit back and say, unless DPP brings it up, then you know what? Good. Let's and I've told you that the issue. person in, in charge of setting the agenda is uh, the majority leadership and the minority leadership. And look at what the majority leadership set out. Uh, let's, let's remove Kenya out of the ICC and that's all, right. all the day. I, I think you can can see that uh, either they are boycotting or some are going to posture in Netherlands. They, they actually do not know the core business and I'm surprised you're saying that uh, is the agenda of uh, the president. We have seen where parliament, you go to parliament, they have the mandate to tell the executive that you will not do this. We will not give you money for this. I remember when money was allocated to build an office or buy an office for president, retired President Kibaki. Parliament said, this money is not going there. That is, should have been your role. But because you have forgotten this role, either the role is to wait for the court leadership to send texts saying, I, I, I really think that you must understand that. something, uh, We have gotten it wrong. Uh, Sophia, uh, let, let me uh, uh, help this gentleman understand one thing. Yes. Uh, parliament does exercise oversight, and Parliament does help in the budget-making process of various institutions. Yes. But the acts and how we do the job, Parliament's role is not to tell you how to do your job. So first, the initiative has to come from some state officer to tell us this is what we want to do, this is how we want to do it. Parliament just questions. We tell you, yes, we cannot give you this sort of money for the function they're asking for. But otherwise, if they do not have initiative, and if at all the person has the initiative is a majority leader, for example, and the only thing he brings to Parliament in terms of legislation is to disband or get Kenya out of the ICC, then that is where the problem lies. We shall wait today and see what the President will say in Parliament on the ICC question, yes. and of course another day for more discussions on the same. Let's move on to CIC, put out a full page and a half ad on what they say is uh, illegalities that Parliament has been engaging in. Um, the question of what's been happening with Embu County, the impeachment there, and now the CS is to appear before <coughs> Parliament. Talk to us about that. I, I think, Sophia, one of, the, one of the concerns we have as an institution is that if you look back at the assault on the Constitution, in the, the first generation assault on the Constitution in the 60s, the institution that led the assault on the Constitution was the executive. It was a powerful executive. It ended up being a very autocratic uh, executive. If you look at the assault on the Constitution now, the primary institution that is assaulting the Constitution is Parliament. I know that we're talking about the Senate or we're talking about the National Assembly. You see it all the time. Last week, the Senate summons the, the Treasury and tells them they must stop funding for counties. There are constitutional provisions on how you stop funding. 
There's a whole process that is provided for in the law that parliament passed. But they're saying, no, 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 that doesn't matter. We have passed the resolution, <coughs> ignore the law, ignore the constitution. If you look at all the bills that have been passed for amendment to the constitution to date, and NATO will know that, whether they're private, most of them are private members anyway, almost 90% of them have something to do with the benefits to parliament. Whether you're talking about the extension to the election date to December, whether you're talking about removing members of parliament as state officers, whether you're looking for the one that I have just seen which wants to appoint um, cabinet secretaries uh, from parliament, almost all the amendments that are being sought are the, the ones that directly benefit parliament. And what we are saying is that there is a growing danger that the very substantive powers that were given by parliament will be used to abuse and assault the constitution. And we are telling Kenyans you need to be alert to that. The, the assault on the judiciary, where members of parliament say, you know, we will not obey court orders, we are going to disconnect to the judiciary, we find that unfortunate. And by the way, we will be the first institution to say that when it comes to the way that the judiciary uh, issues orders against parliament, the judiciary needs to be cautious. You know, because again, you, you want to protect the, the separation of powers and allow institutions to do their work. But even if the judiciary makes a wrong decision, that decision is binding. It doesn't matter whether it is parliament, it doesn't matter who it is, that decision is, is binding. If we allow the possibility that anybody can decide whether or not this is a good order, then who else is entitled to that privilege? Are other Kenyans entitled to that privilege or is it just parliament? So what we are saying is that we need to be careful, we need to be alert to the fact that parliament is starting to abuse its powers, powers given by the constitution. And that cannot be good for a constitutional order. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Sophia, I, I'm happy that you brought Waikanju here. Because one, I think the CIC <laughs> is uh, getting um, very excited about bashing parliament. And I think it's an unfortunate thing. Uh, the, the latest period, but I'll come back to it. But let, let's first ask, we've watched presidential appointments which go contrary to the constitution presidential appointments that are, have no regard to values that are supposed in the constitution. The CIC has been silent. We've watched several times when the executive, for example, has floated the constitution, and CIC knows it. They, they've always silent. But when it comes to issues parliamentary, they are always very <coughs> Give quick. us an instance where they've done that and the CIC has been silent. I mean, I'm just giving you the, the issue of appointments, for example. The, okay. the, 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 Let me say something the, about that. You know we have a constitutional process. The president nominates members, proposes members, and takes them to parliament. Parliament sits and affirms those appointments. Parliament. Now, Parliament, having said, and by the way, in those committees, generally, their appointments, their acceptance is bipartisan. Even the latest appointments of the ambassadors and everybody. They sit in committee. They look at those issues. They decide it's okay. They go to the house. They vote. And then they turn around and say, why is he, is he not stopping us? Hello. It is, that is, there's a constitutional responsibility. And once that constitutional responsibility is, is carried out by parliament, if there's a failure, the failure again is parliament. Uh, and, 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 yeah. and you see, the way it's very easy at, 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 at getting back to parliament again. The president, for example, um, appoints or, or nominates for appointment only people, for example, uh, that he thinks are, are prudent at particular points disregarding the values. And, and uh, CIC has never bothered to, to advise the president. But anyway, because he, he still blames parliament on this. Let me get to the latest. Uh, no, but Neto, the, the, do, you, do, you, do you think that w the constitutional responsibility to nominate those officers through parliament, you don't think that that is important? You don't think that that is a forum in which actually the, the parliament would insist on those values? And, 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 and you see, unfortunately, yeah. uh, if at all the president, for example, has seen that uh, there's a limitation in the part of parliament, because I mean, parliament, as, as, as usual, there could be a limitation in, the, in, in terms of, uh, in the, on the part of parliament, in terms of uh, uh, exercising its, its rights to, through those appointments. The president then ought to be the one in charge of helping uh, the, Ken the Kenyan nation achieve its values. But, but, but let me get but to the point. But when it's loaded by your own members, that's where I'm getting lost. Then how then is it I mean, the, 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 it's, it's because, it's because then you have, you, have, you have some members of parliament who then do not appreciate, for example, that uh, they're supposed to be checking the executive. See, this, this, this now is not a problem of, uh, of the whole legislature, but a section of the legislature that then doesn't understand that it's supposed to be checking the executive. But anyway, l let me get to this point that, uh, that uh, the CIC put up a paid up at but on. You know, as the Constitution Implementation Commission, Kenyans have been having a small problem. A, me a member of the parla Parliament's job is the art of representation. We're supposed to be responding to the issues my constituents, for example, raise. Uh, why is there no bridge in, in, in Diwa? Why, why is the, the road washed away? That sort of thing. 
We've been having issues in terms of how do we interact with, 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 with the executive, how do we interact with the cabinet secretaries. So then what Parliament did is, is, is to amend the standing orders in a manner that, for example, would allow a committee of oversight to have direct engagement with, with, uh, with, with the cabinet secretaries. Yeah. Two, two places. How has that been happening right now? That has been happening right now by members of cabinet secretaries appearing in committees and then chairmen of, 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 of committees of parliament, members of legislature, responding as if the members of the executive. There's a problem there. So you want them in What, what has parliament done? Parliament is seeking for a method of having a committee of oversight of, 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 of the house where at least 16 members of parliament or 349 could be present and then you have your, the issues of representation addressed sufficiently. CIC has a problem with that. CIC thinks that, for example, parliament now wants the cabinet secretaries to be part of, 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 uh, of, of the legislature. But CIC has no problem when uh, the chairman of committees respond to issues they do not understand that are an executive function. Let's hear from Wada before you comment. I think um, if you look at the role of the CIC, unfortunately, they were not given any powers to implement what they think is right. So they have been reduced to adverts in the newspapers and whatever. <laughs> it's unfortunate, especially when Parliament, even with that limitation, Parliament still feels threatened by CIC. When CIC tells them, look, you have the ultimate power, implement it. Now, when members of parliament cannot do their job. They are busy trying to, 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 to embolorize the evolution. We want to show governors we are the ones in charge. We want to chair, chair this committee. We want to do this. There is need for parliament itself to assume its correct constitutional role, renew itself and accept that certain things they are doing wrong. I see nothing wrong with what the CSC has done, especially when they only gave you information. That this and this and this you are doing is wrong. Then you, you feel like even CIC should be disbanded. You are, you are in the process of disbanding <laughs> governors, disbanding <laughs> CIC, disbanding people. Something somewhere is not right. So you do not agree that cabinet secretaries should appear <coughs> full plenary to give their reports? The constitution or actually questions. wanted a complete separation so that you allow the president to run the system, you check the president. Okay? Note that each time you want to make your allowances, you call a CSE, uh, a cabinet secretary, come. <laughs> Every time, because they, there's a love for making allowances. So they keep on okay. calling people. And then, after the end of five years, the yes. president will be saying, I failed because my ministers were busy in parliament. And the judiciary and legislature, where we've seen the senators and peers are complaining that they're injecting their, bringing in injunctions in the middle of their process before they're done. Now you see the judiciary weighing in. If you look at the constitution we have, it gives individual rights. Yeah. Okay, so that if parliament, if the senate wants to do something, let them get it right. Let them get it right at the beginning. If they don't, let them ask the attorney general, let them ask the CIC that we want to remove Wambora, mm -hmm. which is the correct way. But if they do it the wrong way, the judici it is the responsibility of the judiciary not to sit back, wait for whether to be guillotined. Then when I'm dead, they come and say, now bring the body, we see. The judiciary is doing the correct thing. You approach it, you state your case, if you're right, But is it becoming it. a scapegoat then? It becomes this vicious It's a scapegoat. Cycle. They're just trying. To, if they got it right, if they got their procedures right, the court would not intervene. But if they got it wrong, surely the court is entitled to come in and say, no, you will not do this. We nullify it. You? you know, um, obviously on the issue of um, the, the CSs appearing in parliament, I don't know that we are necessarily talking about whether it's a more efficient way of doing things or not. I don't think that that is what the Good issue, question. our issue as a commission. Our issue as a commission is that if you, if, you, if you read the language of, I believe it's Article 153, why does it say CSE shall appear before a committee of parliament? You know, the constitution was written with a particular philosophy in mind. The thinking was that the, the reality, and Neto will know, that in parliamentary practice, one of the most inefficient ways of holding people accountable is through question time. Because actually what people do, again, is drama, as opposed to dealing with real issues. If you want to deal with real issues, you deal with them in committee, because then the seers can come and sit there for a whole day. You can actually raise those questions in detail. And I don't think that the only way members of parliament issues are raised is when they're announced on the floor of the house. And, and so what we are saying is that the reason why the constitution structured it that way is to ensure that issues are dealt with in substance. That is why. And I think our fear is that if you accept the argument 
that because by the way whatever you call it this is the entire house you know whatever whether it is called a committee it is actually in the entire house mm -hmm. it's they call a rose by any other name it is still a rose the reality is that if parliament gets away with this then nothing stops it by the way from saying that CSS can appear every morning in the, the general oversight committee will meet every morning if we can get to that ridiculous level the question we need to ask is why was the, our constitution structured in a particular way and our feeling is that the reason why the constitution used that language is because it wanted to avoid CSS appearing before the entire house because we, of our own uh, history of, of question time. And if you read the report by the, of their own members, you will see where it is they are, they are going. Mm. The reality is they want to take, bring back question time because they say it's very popular mem with members of parliament. But that is not what the constitution intended. And, and then finally, let me say this. Ultimately, let us remember that when and that is on the question of the judiciary yes two things one is that the constitution says where anybody where the constitution is threatened with violation you can go to court so you don't have to wait until the violation happens you can you can do it at any, at any time number two is that the two houses have taken each other to court even as they say nobody should go to court against them they themselves in the middle of their proceedings have taken each other to the supreme court <coughs> the senate took the national assembly mm -hmm. so in a sense they recognize on the one hand that the judiciary is important for uh, litigating on rights but other kenyans are not entitled to do that that is our concern and by the way neto the reality is that the but the majority of parliamentarians are very rational and reasonable the problem is that you hardly ever get the voice of the rational and reasonable defining the spirit and the direction of that house. In less than a minute, we need to take a break. Very oh, okay, quickly. But very quickly. Um, you know, one, I am happy that uh, Waiganjo already anticipates where Parliament is going, which is, I think is, 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 for me is the wrong spirit. What you need to be dealing with is right and now. I ask him, for example, right now the way Parliament is dealing with is that we have members of the legislature, chairman of committees, representing uh, the executive in terms of re executive responses. The CIC has not shown us how then do we go around this particular problem because it's, it's a constitutional problem. I mean, where when, for example, you have the chairman responding to issues of the cabinet secretary should be dealing with. How, as the constitution committee, do we deal with that? Okay. As opposed to saying that uh, parliament is getting it wrong by having a committee of oversight. Give us solutions as opposed to just saying parliament is getting but it wrong. Can I tell you something? Yes. On that one, we had a whole weekend in Mombasa with the leadership of the house actually to deal with the question because i agree that it's wrong you see the assumption right now is that the parliamentary majority is necessarily the president's party it's very possible this is a historical accident it's very possible to have the minority as majority as as, as the one that that owns it. then oh. would the leader of the majority then represent the government so yes. in a sense we have a dysfunction but again, we discussed this with Parliament, and we proposed ways in which it can be resolved. These are, these are issues that have been discussed. The we'll, way that Parliament yeah. has gone is the wrong way. Okay, we'll take a short break. On that note, gentlemen, and come back with more. Stay with us on Morning Express.